Hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven with Fly Fisherman Magazine. And for the August-September issue, I'm gonna tie Charlie Pate's Old Mr. Wiggly. This is an awesome smallmouth fly, according to Ross Purnell, so it's gotta be good. Come along, we'll tie one up. Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Craven, and today I'm gonna tie for you Charlie Pate's Old Mr. Wiggly. Um, and this is sort of a, a stealthy, finesse, smallmouth bass pattern, um, where normally you think of poppers and clouser minnows and things like that for uh, smallmouth bass. Um, this is a decidedly more subtle, more uh, uh, techy uh, smallmouth bass pattern and uh, you know more reminiscent of a dry fly but clearly a bass fly still. Um, and this was was developed uh, to fish over pressured fish that uh, um, are in shallow water and uh, don't want to expose themselves too much and you can see in the right colors uh, this would imitate a dragonfly or damselfly very well. Um, I can see this working on still waters just as well here out in Colorado and uh, um, you know honestly I'm pretty sure I could catch trout on that darn thing too. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to tie this. This is a cool fly we're going to have a little fun with it. So I'm going to start off with a Gamakatsu B10S size 4. I'm going to clamp that in my vise. And I've got some 6 aught uni thread in black. And obviously you can tie this in whatever colors you like. Um, it's a pretty uh, um, Pretty simple little pattern and not terribly material intensive. Intensive. It's just foam, silly legs, um, a little bit of dubbing, some thread, a little shot of super glue here and there. Uh, so fairly easy fly. But what I've done there is I've made a thread base all the way back to the bend, and then I want to go forward again in sort of tight spirals, and then I'm going to work back again in a little bit wider spirals. And what I'm trying to do there is corrugate the hook shank a bit so that I've got some texture so that I can glue this foam down well um, and get it anchored in place. Now, uh, one thing I did there is I brought that thread base back a little bit further than the hook point, and I want to have the, my thread hanging e about even with the hook point. You can see I'm just about even there um, with the hook point, and that's going to make sure that when I tie this foam down, I'm tying it down on top of that thread base um, and not on bare metal. So now I'm going to take and put just a little bit of super glue, glue here at the bend. We can smooth that out a little bit if we need to. And I've got a piece of uh, Tiger Beetle Green Loco Foam. Uh, so this is a foam with foil on one side of it. It's just two millimeter foam on the other side, but green foil on the other side. Um, and I'm going to fold this piece of foam in half. This piece of foam is cut, if I hold it here without touching the glue, um, maybe just slightly wider than half a hook, sh hook gap. Um, you know, somewhere between you know half a hook gap and three quarters of a hook gap. Um, I like a little bit wider piece so it will buckle round. And then I'm going to fold that in half. So this piece is, you know, all together probably four to five inches long. Um, but I'm going to fold it in half. And what I want to do for a measurement here um, is I want about 20% um, of the shank length um, in this loop end sticking out the front end. So you have to sort of eyeball that and then set this down on the hook and I'm going to start to bind it down back here at the bend. Now one thing that I found is with this foil on this foam um, your thread wants to grab and stick to that foil. So what I've been doing is I just wet my finger with a little saliva and I'll just run it down the thread so it's just a little bit wet and I'll take a very upright turnaround and then follow that up with four or five more to anchor that in place. And then you can kind of square things up. Your glue will grab um, relatively quickly here, and we'll add more glue as we go. But you can see that's tied down right there at the bend. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of black peacock eye stubbing. Um, and it really doesn't take much here. The glue hasn't quite grabbed yet, so you want to pay attention to that. And I'm going to dub a tight little strand. Um, and I don't need a ton here. We're just going to dub one segment worth at a time. And that's going to keep us uh, from building up too much thread bulk where, we're, where our tie downs are. So I'm going to pull that foam back out of the way. And I'm going to move the thread forward about 20, 20 to 25 percent of the hook shank. And build a little ball there. And then I want to end with the thread right at the front edge of that dubbing. I'll fold that foam forward, wet that thread again. Like I say, that just helps that thread slide down in there and I want to try to make those wraps as straight around as I can. Four or five turns there to create the that front end of the first segment. 
I'm going to repeat that a couple more times with another little pinch of dubbing. I'll fold that foam back and build another little ball. Wet that thread a bit. And create the next segment. And we're shooting for these segments to be, at least the first two, about the same size. Now this third one I like to make just a little bit longer. For no apparent reason, other than I think it looks cool that way. You could certainly make them equal and you'd probably stand a pretty good chance catching a fish. But you, you do however you want. So I'm going to make this just a little bit longer than those first two. And I want to dub that right up to the front edge of that, that foam. And again, end with my bare thread right at the front edge of that dubbing. If you've got anything sticking out, I like to trim that out. So I'll wet that thread the th third time. And create this segment. And you can see it's just slightly bigger than those first two. Just slightly. Now in this segment, what I'm going to do for the back legs on this fly, um, and these are sort of the insect legs, you know, if you're thinking dragonfly, um, you can kind of use your imagination and think about the uh, uh, shorter little legs that stick out of the thorax on a dragonfly. Um, I'm going to use some black with blue flake silly legs. Um, and I tied a bunch of these kind of warming up for this article in uh, this video. Um, and I found that if I just tied this in, uh, along this segment, th these legs were in the way during the whole rest of the fly. So I finally figured out to leave them attached to each other. And I'm going to fold or lay this in along the near side to start with. Um, and and you know, about back to the hook bit. We're going to trim them much shorter. But I'm going to bind that in place with just a couple turns of thread. So we've got those bound along the near side. And I try to keep those pretty flat. Then I'm going to take and fold this around in half and bind it again on the far side. And you can see that leaves me with these little loops of material that are buckled up over the front. So what I'm going to do is fold that long end back and clip it in my material spring. And then, because these will be in the way, I'm just going to fold that back and there's always a little twist in them that will hold those back out of the way. That took me, uh, oh, I don't know, 12 or 15 flies to figure out. Um, but that makes this much easier. The, the rest of this process will go much easier without those legs dangling in your way. And of course, we'll cut them later to finish off the fly. So now I'm going to take another little pinch of dubbing. Same dubbing here. Um, although there's not a reason that you couldn't change colors of the dubbing along through here, you know, in the back and the front if you wanted to, to gussy things up a little bit. And I'm going to dub one more little ball here at this front end, right up to the front edge of the foam. Just kind of round things out and then end with the thread just behind the hook eye. Once I'm there, I'll wet that thread and bind that foam down one more time. Get a good tight anchor on there. So we've got a total of five segments. I know that those rubber legs or silly legs are covering a couple of them, but Total of five segments, and you can see the bottom is all smooth dubbing. Now for the wings, what we're going to use are uh, metallic silver or smoke gray silly legs. Um, and these are just standard size silly legs, not nymph. Um, although I did tie some with the nymph size silly legs, which are a little finer. Um, and that looks awfully good too, so uh, not making any judgments there. Um, but what I've got here, if I can get a hold of it, are three strands that I've taken out of the, out of the hank. And I've just folded them in half with the closed ends together and a loop at the bottom. And I'm going to take that loop and just cut that right in half. Um, so I've got these cut to equal length. And I'm going to take one half of this and with the closed end or connected end together, I'm going to lay this in in this last segment and try to catch it about the center of its length. And you can kind of get it with one soft turn and kind of pull things and get them exactly where you want them and then cinch that down. And it's just going to take a couple of turns there. Then I'm going to take the other half of that batch of legs and I'll tie it in on my far side in the same manner. I like to let my thread sort of roll it into that crease. And then you can sort of 
pull up and down and get everything even. I got that a little tighter than I necessarily need it. That's a little more like it. Cinch that down. So you can see those are pretty widespread. And then the final thing I'm going to tie in is just a strip of, this is two millimeter foam. Um, and I've, you know, it's two millimeters thick and I've cut it, let's say about three millimeters wide. Um, and this is going to be an indicator. This is just, this slide is going to sit low on the water. So something that sticks up makes it a little easier to see is going to be welcome. Um, so I'm going to lay this in, um, just overlapping about a third up onto the head there and put a turn around it and cinch it in place right there on top. And you can kind of finagle it into place so that it's square on top of the fly. And then I'll lift the head, and you can see this is the reason that I left these legs attached. <clears throat> if these were all loose, you'd have to contend with all six of them trying to get things back out of the way. Um, in this case, I could just sweep this all back and jump my thread up here just behind the hook eye for a couple turns. And then I'll whip finish right up there behind the eye. And you can see you just hold that piece of foam back out of the way. Cinch that whip finish down, trim that thread up. All right, so now what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this foam indicator um, just a little longer than one of those segments. Um, I don't need it to be terribly tall, but I just want something to kind of stick up so it makes it a little easier to see. Um, now I'm going to come in with my scissor tips, and I'll take my bottom scissor tip and put it in that loop with the black and blue silly legs, um, and kind of get it right to the center, and then trim those down so that they spring loose of that loop. And then I like to kind of tweak these just a little bit so they point down just a bit. And to do that, I'll show you here on your on your side, let me get these wing fibers out of the way, is I can just kind of pull this down. I can still adjust that um, until I put super glue on it. I, those are very adjustable. Um, and I want those legs to be pretty short. So I'll trim both ends. Pretty short little stubby legs there. And try to get them relatively even. And you can see they splay out and create a fair bit of surface area as well. Now for the wings, or the silver fibers, I'm going to take these and try to pull these all up above the hook to the same length and trim those off. And I usually trim them just below uh, where the connection point is on the, on the silly legs. Um, if you've got to, you know, make sure that, they're, that they do, do indeed become separated. Now I'm going to come in and with a little bit of thin super glue, I'm going to put just a light coat here between the, or on the top um, of this back piece of foam. And I just put a little bit down there and then I'll use my dubbing needle to sort of smear that around. And I want to get that edge to edge, um, just a nice thin coat. This thin super glue works great on this foam. And I'll push the two pieces of foam together and just pinch them just for a second. They should grab right away. For some reason, that never seems to work when I'm doing a demo or a, or a video. Maybe I need to go just a little bit more glue in there. There we go. That's going to stick. Now, one of the problems, as we all know, um, with a little bit more glue, um, is you run a real good chance of getting your finger stuck to it. Just like that. That's about. That's what I was about to finish saying. Look, I've got a little tinsel or a little foil on my finger now. Um, so be careful of that with that glue. Funny that that happened just then. So we're going to let that dry for just a second, so I don't stay uh, or don't get any more stuck to it. I'll use that needle to kind of wipe off the extra. Now I'm going to have foil stuck to my finger the rest of the day. Great, great. Thanks, Charlie. All right. So now, uh, to trim this back end, what I like to do um, is come in with a good sharp pair of scissors. Um, and this glue should be dry now. I don't feel like there's any more coming out. Um, I'm going to come in at a long angle. We want a fairly short tail, but I'm going to come in at a long angle. Um, and I kind of angle my scissors toward the base of the body to knock one side off. And then I'll kind of determine my length, which is about half a shank length. And I'll lay my scissors in at the opposite angle and cut that to a point, like so. Um, if your tip tip end back here isn't very square, you can come up from the end and square it up a bit. Mine was pretty good there. 
and the tie-in process on that is all done. Now, uh, one thing that I like to do is I like to come in with a little bit of, of super glue. And again, be, be careful with this. We just saw what happens if you use too much. Um, and I just use it on my dummy needle, but go through each one of those segments with a little light coat. And I'm just dipping my needle in some glue here on my desk. And you can see if I hesitate too long, that wants to, to stick as well. Then I'm going to hit the segments on the bottom as well. Um, my bottle uh, is pretty full right now. Um, I'll see if I can show you here. Um, if you've got one of these fine tips, it's pretty full here, so it's a little hard to control, but I like to just touch a drop to each of those segments um, all the way around the hook. And you can see that'll lock everything in. Um, that is, uh, just for the record, that's Starbond uh, super fast thin super glue that I just used there um, and I've been using that for a few weeks now that was actually a tip from Josh Smitherman uh, who I did the uh, uh, Smitherman's Dragon Nymph article uh, Josh showed me the super glue and it gosh it works great um, it's very thin and clearly very sticky dries real fast too um, but at any rate let's get back to to Charlie Pate um, and this old Mr. Wiggly now you can see how that is um, still very clearly a bass fly with those rubber, you know, silly rubber legs, um, or silly legs, I don't think they're silly, they look exactly right, um, but impressionistic, sort of cartoonish even, um, which is, you know, one of the trademarks of bass flies. They're uh, just a little more animated and uh, exaggerated than trout flies, um, but with a nice foam body, everything's, and this is really locked down tightly in here as well. Um, nice foam body, low floating fly, um, and pretty reminiscent of a, of a dragonfly or damselfly. You can see how that fly could uh, pass for a few different things, as a matter of fact. So there it is, Charlie Pate's Old Mr. Wiggly. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. I enjoyed tying it. You guys take care. We'll talk again soon.